All right, internet, welcome back to challenge number eight or nine since we're starting from zero. Now this challenge is called Vault and I sadly had to cheat on this challenge, uh, not the entirety of the challenge, just near the end. And uh, with cheating, thankfully, we have our handy dandy Ethernaut series from the Web3 blockchain developer. I'll get it right eventually. Um, he helped me with one last piece of the challenge that I couldn't necessarily crack, and I'll explain exactly what that was. Um, but before we get into that, we will first look at the challenge title. So here you can see at the top it says, this is called Vault, and it basically states that we need to unlock the vault to pass the level. That's it, that's all I have to do. Sounds pretty straightforward, right? Well, there's a lot that I wanna show you here, but one piece about this entire challenge is actually around the process of keeping secrets that are on chain. Now, when you combine blockchain, specifically Ethereum and the transparency that comes with it and secrets, they don't necessarily go well together unless you do one of two things. So either you encrypt the data prior to putting it on chain so it's unable to be seen by others without the secret key, or you uh, utilize zero knowledge proofs, which is gonna be a conversation on itself. It might be an entire series on its own because it's so complex, but those are two methods of how you can do this. Now with the secrets concept, I remembered Mad TV and this great skit here. It has nothing to do with the challenge, but I wanted to share it with you uh, lovely souls so you knew exactly what came to mind. I don't even know if you can hear this, but we'll, uh, we'll play two seconds of it. Not at double speed. You can't tell anyone. Such good skit. If you've not seen it, uh, research uh, Mad TV. That's your that's your homework. Okay, so let's look at the code before we do anything else. That'll be the first thing we start with. Now, with the code, we're going to look at this as we do for all the all of the different code uh, snippets that we've looked at. As we have the compiler and we see that it's floating point, and we say no no to floating points. It needs to be static. Uh, additionally, if we're going to put this in Remix, it's going to have to be at 8.0 as per usual. So that's that's definitely not an eight. That is an eight. Okay, so that's our compiler version. Next, we're gonna to go to the contract. So we can see this is called Vault. Now with this contract, there's a few things we're gonna point out here. So we have a few state variables here. So we have a state variable here and a state variable here. Now this one here is gonna be a Boolean. So it's either gonna be true or false when it's locked. And this is gonna be bytes 32. That's gonna be basically a simplistic string. And that string is gonna be our password. Now with this, we have a few things here. So we have our constructor and we have a function. Now our constructor is really the key to this challenge where our constructor, uh, the person that deploys this contract, they're gonna, in, they're gonna input a password. And when they input that password and when this contract's deployed, they're gonna then lock the Boolean. So the Boolean's gonna go to true for locked. And then we're gonna have our password stored in this, stored in this state variable as password. Now in our function, our job here is basically to figure out specifically what this password is so we can then input it into unlock so which then we can finally uh, unlock the, the contract, turn it from basically locked from true to false. And basically, you know, we have an if saying if the password equals uh, password, then we're gonna unlock it. Now, after looking at all of this, there's one thing that stands out here, which is the state variable, which is password. And the thing that stands out to you should be this private, this private kind of uh, decorator on, on the state variable stating that this specific variable is private to this contract in the sense that it isn't necessarily able to be utilized outside of the contract, but that does not mean that this is not visible. This specifically can be seen by uh, individuals that have access to basically the blockchain, which is everybody. Now that's an important mistake that has been made uh, a few times back in, back in the day and, and it's still happening today where there's new developers and they see that there's this private decorator. So they assume that if I put private behind this state variable, that means that it's going to be private. No one's going to see it when it's on chain, but that's not the case. And we're going to prove that with this challenge specifically. Now that's, that's the, the premise of the challenge, right? Is the private variable. And we know that it's not necessarily invisible and we can see that password. And once we've seen it, we can unlock the contract. Now, as per usual, I'm gonna walk you through a series of notes that I have here and a bunch of resources that I found useful when kind of learning more about how to solve this challenge. So this sentence here is basically everything I've already said, so we can ignore that. Uh, zero knowledge proofs, like we said, this is something that's gonna be a separate, uh, it's probably series in its own, but this is very important tech. So if you've not heard about zero knowledge, 
you should you should at least look at maybe three or four lectures just to understand what it is and more importantly what are the use cases that it can be applied to once scaled and utilized via um, ZK sync or uh, Starknet or fill in the blank some of the imp implementations of this because this is going to be fundamental to both the scalability of Ethereum and also the uh, adoption of this from usually enterprises and also um, just individuals in general. So this is quite important. That being said, we're going to skip over that. We're going to go down to here. Um, so this part here is basically talking through a specific Web3 utility uh, method that we're going to utilize to actually get the information we need um, from the blockchain. Now we've talked about Web3, uh, basically the Web3 utils in the past. And with Web3 utils, this is basically our way to interact with the blockchain. We need to use this, um, this basically it's a, it's a global object that's put into your web browser to allow you to interact with the blockchain through the console, um, basically inside of, your, inside of your Chrome or Firefox. Now, in addition to that, there's a really important piece here when it comes to understanding where state variables are placed and which state variables um, we want to gain access to. And that really comes down to basically how storage and memory are uh, manipulated and managed within Ethereum. Now, when looking into this topic, you'll come across the, the idea of slots. Now, I have a, an image down here that kind of gives you an idea of what slots uh, kind of are. And we'll make this a little bigger, maybe. Cool. Now, looking at this, we can see there's a few different areas I wanted to point out. This green section here is showing you generally the slot number, right? So here you can see this is slot number zero. This is slot number one, two, three. And then we have some gobbledygook down here once you've kind of exceeded that because you can see it's, it's going into the future. And you can see in slot zero, we have this basically string of bytes. Below that, we have this bytes, this bytes, and this bytes. So that's different bits of data that are being stored in these slots. And the slots themselves tend to hold a series of items but it's important to know that these slots are limited by 32 bytes themselves. And I've mentioned that above here and you'll see there's some links I've linked you to as well. So first we'll go to the get storage app, which is the thing I mentioned about Web3. It'll explain to you kind of what's inside of that and we'll get in more details on that later. But first we're gonna keep with the, with the notes. So slot positioning, this is from the Google Docs or Google Docs, this is from the Solidity Docs. And in here they're talking specifically about slot and storages and how, st um, how things are stored within uh, Ethereum. Now in here you can see there's some information around basically stating that 32 bytes is the limit and with that being said there's um, some basically gas optimizations you can make with the adjustments of the state variables that you set up and there's a quick example here which isn't necessarily related to attacking a vulnerable contract but when you're doing an audit for a contract as an auditor you do look at sometimes sometimes you look at ga gas optimizations and that's kind of a benefit of having an auditor anywho you can see here's two setups so we can say this is setup one and this is going to be setup two now setup one here is actually uh, optimi optimized for gas efficiency reason being is that we have 128 128 and 256 and those are the three different slots so we have slot one slot two and slot three and then here we have 128 256 and 128 and these are uh, slots one, two, and three, and they're ordered differently. The reason that this is a big deal is because the 128 um, slot that we have, uh, those can actually be uh, combined together in the same slot. So this could be all slot zero, and then the 256 is gonna, that's bytes, so that's gonna equal out to 32. Uh, bytes or bits, and this is bits and this is bytes, and that's gonna be slot one. Now this is more efficient, obviously, because we're, we're using two slots instead of three. Well, if we utilize this approach where we have 128, 256 here, and then 128 here, we can see that there's going to be a lot of padding that's going to happen here because this is slot zero, and we're going to have to pad out the remaining empty space. So we can then go on to slot one where 256 is because 256 can't run into 128 because it would take up too much space and that would exceed the 32 byte limit that we've set here. So this is gonna basically have its own slot and this will be the same. So this will be slot two and this will basically have to have some padding here as well. So that's a bit of a, around gas optimization and how that functions. And like I said, it's not really associated to the vulnerability but it's important to understand and also it's important to understand how the slots function. So we'll stop there with that point and move on to the next thing. 
So some other resources they wanted to share. This one talks to uh, slots and how they work. That's another good resource. We'll dive deep in that one, but you can link at it in the description. Uh, this explanation I thought was quite good because they actually not only talked about storage within Ethereum, but they also um, did comparisons between how storage and memory is managed within uh, Web2 uh, kind of concepts and languages. So it's kind of nice to have that analogy between something that some of us already, already are, are aware of and then st new stuff. So if we go down here, um, there's a pretty good image they pulled together here that kind of walks you through uh, different items and, and just depicting what slots look like in your head, right, to make it more intuitive. So we have slot zero, and that's going to basically store foo. And if I go back up here, you can see the, you can see the code. So we have foo here, bar, and then uh, an array. So we have slot zero, which is going to be for foo. That's always going to be at the top, the first state variable stated there. The second one's going to be a slot, uh, slot one, which is slot two, depending if you're starting from zero or not. And then we have slot two, which is gonna be our array, which is gonna be uh, this one here. So we're basically taking this two, adding it into the array, and then that's gonna basically be established here. So that's kind of the idea of slots, and that's a good uh, blog you should check out and read. And with that being said, that is everything I wanted to share. So now let's solve the challenge. Um, there's two ways to solve this challenge. So one way I found through uh, the just like kind of tinkering around with Etherscan and poking around and trying to find the answer there, I found it that way. But also that way I can't actually reproduce and figure out how I got to that point. Um, but I know that there's a way to solve it through the console. So if we open up the console and clear this out because it's super crazy, uh, and we'll go through here and play with stuff. So if we do await contract ABI to see what we have for ABI. We have the items that we've already known about. So as we've discussed already, we have our constructor here, which takes an input. You can see it takes an input here, one input. We have our uh, locked um, our locked state variable. And then we have our function right here, which is basically going to be us, uh, us unlocking it. Now, there's a few things we want to do here. So first, we want to I don't really think we need the address. We can, we can get the address just because we can. So that's the address. And then we will check to see the uh, Boolean state. So we can see that it's locked and our goal, remember, is just to unlock the vault. That's the only goal we have. So the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to do this uh, Web3 uh, get storage app. All right. So this is the Web3 utils thing I talked to you about. We've used in previous challenges. So remember, this is a global object, object that's placed into the browser that allows us to interact with the blockchain. And there's a series of methods that we can leverage here. And there's an extension, obviously, so an Ethereum method that we're going to use. And specifically, get storage. If you look at the documentation here, you'll see that there's specific parameters that this specific method will take. Now, there's you can really you can put all these in here if you wanted to, but I'm only going to put in a few just to make it easier on myself and probably on you. Uh, one that's required is the address. So you need the address of the contract that you're getting the, the data from. And then you, you want to know the position of where you're getting the data from. And that position uh, option is really referring to the slot conversation we just had. So it's basically looking um, the index of the position of the storage. And this is, you know, the slot 0, 1, 2, etc. That's what we've talked about. Now, we know that inside of our code that locked is at slot zero and password is at slot one. So we need slot one, not slot zero. So if we come back here and we take our address and we put this into here and we can do slot zero just to show you what that looks like. So for something to be true in kind of this hex hashed situation here that fits within the, the, the bytes 32 concept. And remember how I told you the one was less gas efficient. Well, that, that kind of comes into play here because you can see that all this stuff here is zeroed out. So that's considered padding because we have to fill in that 32 byte slot so we can go into the next one. And that one there is basically stating that this is a Boolean value that's true. Now, if we come in here, so that's slot zero, right? So that's our locked piece. So now if we change this to one, we're going to get a different value here. And this value is basically our password um, hashed and put into a, I think it's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a SHA-256, SHA-3. SHA-3 hash, um, that's our password hashed. Now, we don't necessarily know what this is, and we could decode this with a uh, utility in here, um, but I'm just gonna show you inside of Etherscan. So the way I came about finding this, and I'm pretty sure this is how I came to find it, is going into here, 
and looking at your uh, stuff that I deleted. Perfect. Um, but there is a transaction value that we've pulled back from here. And the transaction value pulled back, I just basically copied and pasted and put in here. And we actually might be able to do the same thing with the contract. So let's take this out, grab the address of the contract, put this in here. And you can see that the creator is this address and this is the transaction of when it was created. So I think, let's make sure this is the right contract. Yeah. So if I go to this transaction here, I would thought I would see something in the state, but I'm not seeing it there, but this one, I do see it there. So in the state, you can see there's a series of transactions that occurred over time for this um, specific uh, contract. And if we open this section up here, we can see that there, this is slot zero, right? Because we have our, um, our true value here. And then this is gonna be slot one which might actually match up. It does, it matches up with our, our uh, hash here. And if we actually, we can change this hex value to text, thanks to Etherscan. And you can see that our password actually is a, a very strong secret password with a smiley face. That's the password. Now, the thing I got stuck on here, and the reason I had to cheat on the other YouTube channel is because I was basically copying and pasting this uh, specific password here into uh, the unlock function. And that was the wrong approach we needed to put in just the hast function. So if I take this and I say contract unlock, I put our value in, it's gonna then ask us to commit that transaction. So if we commit this, did that a little too fast. Now we have to wait. All right, so it's been mined. So if we run await contract.locked again, it's gonna be false. So that means that we've unlocked it. So all we have to do is submit our instance and wait again. And after we've waited here, we should have completed the challenge. And voila, there you go. We've won the challenge and we've completed it. So you can see level completed. You can see they're talking about basically the importance of understanding the difference between private and what that means. Uh, they also talk about uh, variables and slots and stuff, but also they talk about snarks, which is zero, zero knowledge proofs that I've discussed previously that you can read more about. With that being said, that was the vault challenge and I'll see you on King.